Welcome to the Sound Mind Podcast, where I invite interesting guests from the music field and discuss with them topics such as musical and personal growth, pursuing excellence and self-talk, body and mind maintenance, practice and work routines, music business and more. I'm your host, Mikhail Krustel, and welcome to the Sound Mind Podcast. Hello dear listeners and viewers. On today's episode my guest is Panagiotis Andreu, a wonderful New York based musician and a bass player touring all over the world as a member of different projects. I first found out about him 12 years ago already through a series of YouTube videos that he made together with his band New York Gypsy All Stars. I also have to mention that they were probably one of my main influences in regard to Balkan fusion music. What's coming up is a heartfelt conversation where we will discuss topics such as life of a touring musician, leaving your country and going to study abroad in a pre-internet era, life of a musician in New York, we will be discussing also the contrast between Mediterranean culture and the rest of the world, we will be talking about the importance of taking therapy, the art of saying no, the impact that social media has on our lives, and we'll also be briefly discussing the life of monkeys. So I hope that you will enjoy and have fun. Hello, dear Panagiotis, and uh, welcome to the Sound Mind podcast. Thank you so much for uh, yeah for re- responding and uh, being a part of this uh, this show. Thank you. Well, thanks for having me. Happy yeah. to be here. Yeah, um, we've chatted already a little bit, and you have quite quite a busy day ahead of you. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to be concise with with my questions. And um, straight off the bat, I wanna actually um, share a little uh, insight from uh, when I uh, found out about you actually, and it was um, I think. I I just made my my first trio and uh I think YouTube just became a thing something like that and then uh, me and my friends that we were playing together and we were also playing a little bit of like Balkan inspired music you know and man when we clicked on that New York Gypsy All Star video like holy smokes man that was different that that just hit different i think we had it on replay and we were like oh my god this is insane you know check this out and um yeah i i I have to say also thanks for for inspiring me through through youtube videos such such as that i think you were probably some of the first dudes that actually put put some serious balkan stuff uh on the on the internet as as far as i um as far as I remember, you know, like it was something very special. Yeah, man, you're welcome. I mean, thank you for checking it out. And it was a lot of fun back then to do that stuff. We worked a lot on that too. Um, yeah, it was a great process and it still is. We're still playing. Actually, we're playing <laughs> we're playing this amazing party in two days uh, here in Brooklyn. It's called uh, Disco Tehran. Ch- check these guys out. They're Persians, uh, Iranian, sorry. And um, they have a it's an amazing crowd always gives me hope whenever i play this party um we've done it like two three times and there's all these young people that are you know in this case new yorkers that are so into you know non-western like you know world music kind of vibe but they they rock out with that like rock out like they're having the time of their lives and i'm like wow that's amazing you know it's so beautiful yeah, yeah, I've been following. I've been following you, and I it it seems like recently you really um, re gave some rebirth to this uh, New York Gypsy All Star Band, or it, did it just start to appear in my feed? Also, not not sure. Like, uh, I mean, we're. Tr- I mean, look, we have this material that we need to record, and it just hasn't. We haven't gotten around to it, but it's it's a matter of months um, that we're gonna get in and record it and uh yeah let's see where you know see where it goes um it's not easy you know how it is it's not easy doing creative stuff you have to live to to survive and like living here is very difficult you know um it's uh 
expensive, <laughs> like everywhere else in the world, I guess. But you know, particularly in in a city like New York, it's very intense. So it's always a kind. It was kind of, and things are changing so much too. Like it was used to be pretty straightforward when I was younger. Like you play your instrument and you play in a band and you work with a band and that's it. But nowadays, it's just that you know you have to learn how to do so many things on your own. Mm. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, I completely understand how it is. Remember, we're discussing to have this duo project already for a year, and I'm st I'm still working on it, you know. But and we're gonna g we're gonna make it, man. <laughs> One day it will come. I'll be ha I'll be happy. I was in Slovenia the last couple of years, you know, for Jazinti festival, yeah. and I had a great, I mean, epic time. We had a great time. The only thing is that I never got to get out of the neighborhood there, you know, to see the rest of the country, but. Um, but they were great hosts and we had, you know, and I got to see, you know, Slovenia has a great system. Like there's so many uh, good young musicians. Um, like I met a lot of, a lot of great prospect, you know, prospect and talent. And it seems like the country supports that. And that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think it is quite special because and and also here, I think you have similar stuff in Greece, like the um, the music schools are are public, right? Um, from the government, is is that also in Greece? So, like maybe more people might go. To, the youth is more musically educated in that sense, and I think you guys also have uh, in Greece, um, for example, choirs. And and do you somewhere I read that you were also a member of this Byzantine. Um, choir when you were a kid um yeah yeah i did no i did present music because i was part i was actually the third class of this uh system that was created with public music schools um so now they're all over the country like they're everywhere mm -hmm. and every every state capital has one and uh, they're doing great because you know byzantine music is part of like the national identity which, you know, I don't like national identities and all this, you know, music is categorizing. But at the same time, I have to admit, it's cool to be checking out medieval Christian music of the Eastern Roman Empire. It has like a different, you know, there's, there's a lot to learn there too. There's different phrasing, different concepts, different thinking of how to, to, to compose a connection with the past, you know, like there's always, that's, that's my um, favorite thing about any kind of music and any kind of language too like music and language are like sister arts um and from there you con you can connect to what's around it without necessarily needing geography you know and geo geopolitics and all that so yeah i did do that i do not remember you know i'm not, I, I never got into doing it <clears throat> but i'm pretty sure some of it's is in, in in me inside me <laughs> what i do without without knowing it you know yeah and um maybe could you guide us through like your your day how do, do you have like a morning routine or something or on a busy day like this like what keeps you on track and and how do you tackle it i don't know if i'm the best person to talk about routines because of my mm, yeah i look if i look in the past since i came here since i finished my my studies and stuff and i started touring and playing and that's been it and when you play either playing in the city or traveling and more traveling and more traveling um you just wait for the what so february comes what do i have to do i have to go to germany for a week and then i have to go to i don't know china and then i have to go to you know go back and play this record this like that's like like, like i told you this these were the that was what i knew that i had to do and now things are not like that and the pandemic really changed that so routines in good when things are flowing right i should be able to exercise and i should be able to practice either learn music that i have to learn from from somebody which you can take advantage of the music that you have to learn as well um just have to know when you have to learn music and when you, you can practice some music but everything you know you play you play like a, a, a you play guitar so you know for us the fretboard is like a never-ending 
uh, quest of learning. So, um, you know, I used that. I, I realized in the pandemic that I had like a lot of uh, weakness with that, knowing my fretboard. So, you know, a, a, a song comes along. So I learned it here, I learned it there, and I, I learn it everywhere. I try to learn in different keys. Um, trying to still haven't learned how to you know when to stop and that actually mark juliana told me that once um he told me i'm like what are you what are you practicing right now and how and all that and he told me well the trick is not no not only when to start but knowing when to finish and that makes you more productive and stuff and i'm i'm, I'm trying to, to learn how to do that but in general after that i'm gonna have to get like like today it depends on the day if i have a gig if i don't have a gig if i have to record something like i have to record something from for, for somebody sometimes i have to do something like this too right you know like an interview or like a you know a meeting but usually you know if i have a gig this particular gig is a little bit of a pain because i have to carry my stuff which is also good because it's kind of humbling to you know be schlepping your uh, gear in the subway you know it's like okay working class let's go <clears throat> uh i'm playing with two dear friends and i'm excited about that so there's that uh and then you know coming back um hopefully sleeping early and then and not like you know um and, and, and waking up relatively early that's the problem you know with with playing at night you know how it is so so that's uh I don't know again not the most inspiring person to to talk to about routines and stuff particularly me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's it's just um I think I think you you mentioned, you know, like you just in the end it's about trying, right? Trying to go to bed early, trying to wake up early, you know, it, and sometimes you miss it for 100%, right? And sometimes you win, you know. And it's uh, it's 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 a discipline like like music, it's discipline. It's yeah. discipline and it's like getting, you know, learning habits. That's it's all about habits and like rewiring and all that. And rewiring and uh, relearning and reset resetting habits. Cause I've been following your posts too, and I know that you you're you're doing you're trying to do that to be healthy and better you and all that. And you know, I'm pretty sure you can tell me yourself that it's not an easy thing to do. Like and it's not an easy thing to say, okay, now I'm gonna go to the river and uh, it's cold outside and I'm gonna you know get in the water or like I'm gonna run up the hill you know you don't wake up in the morning you're like yes yeah. i just want to go and run out in the cold you know but i have done it though i have done it i have done it in the past like i, I would get my bike and like my you know I would go up the bridge with like minus and stuff and weather and i would go and do it and come back and it's you know sometimes it's easier than others also you know we're vulnerable as musicians artists in general i think but as musicians with life too you know life comes at you things happen uh family things problems this that and then you're supposed to uh keep up the good work uh having to deal with 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 problem like serious problems like uh, it's not i'm not talking about me i know people are just dealing you know and it's okay if you can't you know it's like there's a lot of guilt going around if you if you're online about how successful our people are or about how bad you should feel for not doing enough or at the end of the day you have to have a good time i guess you know but it's also life that affects the routine you know it ta it takes it takes resolve and strength mental strength to deal with stuff and yeah. music i have to say music is that's that's one good thing about music like if you play music and if you get to play with people for in my case that that, that is if you get to coexist like all my life has been hard to play with a drummer like that's my kind of a stick specialty whatever um it just takes away a lot of anxiety like it, it feels good it feels really good to do that it's a beautiful thing to do that, to lock with a drummer, to listen to harmony, try to play the right notes, create a bass line. Like that's that's still so such a beautiful thing. Mm. Yeah. And uh I th I think like like you said, you know, like you are li life just comes at you, you know, and 
I th sometimes I think, wow, when I was a kid, you know, and I had only, for example, I started playing the guitar, you know, and everything what I had to worry was when I would actually not even that, you know, I would wake up and my parents would drive me to school and I could practice the whole day and the cook, the food would be cooked, the bills would be paid, you know, <laughs> like it's crazy. Like, uh, what, what a privilege it was to start maybe, you know, even if I started in my 14th year in my, when I was 14, you know, I still enjoyed a couple of years of hotel mama, you know, and, uh, was able to grow, you know, and, you know, life happens as you move out and start on your own. You know? I, I mean, we, you know, we, we, cause I get to travel a lot, like. I I um I don't know if this the generations are coming up. There's so many mm, dark you know messages coming from around the world from the climate, the wars, and all that. I was lucky. I was very lucky growing up. I had a fantastic childhood. We didn't have much, but it was amazing. I was so 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 lucky. I got to be in nature too as much. I got to be here in a city too. I got to play. With, I got to do what I liked in a working class neighborhood where it wasn't very, it was frowned upon to, oh, you, really? He's going to be a musician? And it, on top of that, in a country that doesn't, at the time especially, didn't have any culture, what, what is the base? What does it do, you know? I keep telling that to my, my clinics, classes. Like my dad didn't know what, what I was doing or like my family. Like my dad always w was wondering if I could play a, a song uh you know with my with the bass you asked me once does this instrument play songs so <clears throat> that's one of the reasons that i got so much into displaced afro afro caribbean like harmonic in originally because such a different thing from what i grew up and then the and another amazing thing is that you know we didn't have pluralism back then so i got to be around people when I came to in the in, in the new world. But sorry, I digress. So yeah, I I was lucky too. I was really lucky. Then things now are yeah, they're difficult. Yeah. To it's difficult to survive doing this. And I, I still do, but it's hard. It's hard. And all it takes is, you know, a little bit of bad luck, a little bit of this, little bit of that, and then you are, you know, you're in debt. I don't know. You don't make it. You know, it's it's not far. You know, things have changed a lot. Mm. Like I'll tell you this. When I came here, I was playing a lot in the city. One week of local gigs was enough to to pay your util, you know, your basics. It was enough. It was one, two weeks max. You were good. And I was playing lo just local gigs. They pay the same. Local gigs pay the same. I feel bad for young young people. I mean, I made my connections. I got to travel. I still get like different kinds of work and stuff. But for people that start now, I've there's a lot of pressure like somebody who's, who comes in new york and wants to be in the in the leagues and play with the cats and everything oof. for the ones that don't have you know money or like some kind of background forget about it it's it's torture stress money it's like very expensive things are very expensive and i noticed that from you know back home too like by, you know in greece two people it's, it's difficult after the course it was this event the crisis and stuff too in greece that really stills affecting the society and created a generation of people that are gonna be it's gonna be rough for them economically financially you know ruined a lot of people so lives anyway yeah and you a few moments ago you were talking uh, as a kid how uh, yeah how you were growing up musically could you maybe share how was your uh, musical childhood and if there is uh, some people that were really, I don't know, believing in you and that were giving you that that push, that momentum that propelled you forward? Yeah, I mean, look, it was already, well, I, I need to thank my parents. Uh, my mom being like the city woman, who pushed me to do arts or music and because she was told that I could I could do that uh, as a kid, you know, and my father not interfering with that, not having a problem with that. Although socially it wasn't like it's it was very uh ahead of their time 
to have this kind of attitude towards uh, so that there that by right off the bat <clears throat> that's amazing uh and then i i did have so look mediterraneans tend to, it's a it's a love hate relationship when i go back home there's there's a lot of um support uh, there's also there's also there's also a lot of judgment going around like mediterranean cultures tend to function through you know judgment and guilt you know <laughs> which is you know it has its good and its bad uh, you know it pushes you to but also it stands your growth too um so yeah i had i had support like I, I was lucky to meet my first bass teacher he was great he was a great like he still is he's um his name is Yotis Kutsoglu. I was really lucky to to have him as a because he just came from the states. He was in LA. He started with the Fusion Cats then, and he was the first one that didn't make it. Didn't make the instrument uh, feel like a burden to learn because that that would be the feeling. Of the old school, like everybody would behave as if you were in a classical conservatory and you had to had to practice your skills bigger but if you don't do it don't do it at all if you don't do it right you know if you don't uh which again amazing also like if you get your mechanics early uh well but i learned from this guy um to have fun which is very important because if you want to communicate especially with people you need to be uh conveying this message that this is fun and I want to take you on a journey, whatever that is. Maybe you want to just rest your brain a little bit, you know, and not think of stuff. Or maybe you want to get into stuff. Maybe, you know, it depends on the situation. So yeah, he, he was a big, um, he was, that was, that was great. And then, um, look, I left young. I left young. I started playing music that I liked already. I was out in the market. Like I was working since I was 16, 17. No, yeah. I started playing when I was 16. By the age of 18, I was I was playing in clubs, Greek music, and to paint for my was paying for my own conservatory. Like um, <clears throat> and then I tried, I lived in Denmark for a year when I was like 18. And that didn't that didn't went go too well, but it was an experience to get out of the of of Greece. And you know it's kind of funny because the cultural shock was bigger than than you know Athens Copenhagen was a bigger divide back then culturally than Athens uh, Boston where I first came to the states. Boston made more sense. Okay, I was uh, you I was in awe, but in Copenhagen I was like, what is this? Where am I? Completely different. Also very young, eighteen. I didn't know. Very you know different times. No internet yet. You know. For wow. everybody, I mean, right? Unimagin yeah. Unimaginable right now, like, to be, uh, I don't know, I have, I cannot connect how it is to not have internet and to, I don't know, go study somewhere abroad. I, I, how, how did you do it? Did you send emails? Uh, no, sorry, no emails, right? Like, no, no, oops. no emails. It was oh, another, for me, it would be another six years before I would know whatever whatever that that is. You know, that's I'm talking about 1996. Um. So yeah, I you know I went with a friend who was Greek Danish, and he wanted at that time Jamiroquai was super hot, and he was gonna do a Jamiroquai cover band, and I was like, I want to get out of here. I'm coming with you. And uh, it didn't work out, but it was. It was great to w wake up in a different climate, different culture, different language, all of that. I had it in me always to get, I wanted to see the world. It wasn't on the, I wasn't necessarily pushed away from Greece. I, it just was me wanting to, wanting to, you know, it's, it's a matter of character too. This is something that I, I, I dig still. I'm always amazed by new places, new, you know, listen to language. I don't even need to understand. I don't care. You know, I go to a place, I turn on the TV and I put the most mainstream show just to hear it. Korean. I don't know. Just to hear it. I don't mind at all. It's music, you know? Um, so yeah, uh, it was diff It was, it was a shock though. I'm telling you, it was a shock because I felt by comparison to today that I came from, uh, 
more conservative and closed society, you know, like more. I like Greece back then felt like this, you know. And we're talking about a two and a half hour flight. It's insane. Three hour flight. That's it. North. So that it shouldn't. And it was like different, completely vibe. But, you know, people were nice. I mean, I, I made a lot of friends my age, you know, there. I tried to take some lessons with Danish. Um, I learned some, you know, I've forgotten by now. But Copenhagen is, a, you know, by now it's like one of the most happening cities in the world, actually. But it was great for me to see a different society, more organized, with more cohesiveness as a, as a society, you know, like that cares about families. And it seemed like everybody was doing okay, you know. And I got to play music too. I got to be around music. I got, I got to be exposed to stuff. And I got to see I got to see the European concept of schools because I didn't get into any schools there. I wasn't accepted. And then a year after I took like the Berkeley thing and I got a scholarship. So uh it was a very different they were they were focusing on different areas, not judging anybody like uh about how they you know what is their the curriculum. The um, the the Berkeley people were like, you know, you know, you that's good. Come, you'll learn the rest. You know. Yeah. I still did. I still didn't though. It's kind of funny. I did my own thing, and no, you know, that's that's America. That's a great thing about America. Like, you know, find whatever makes you happy. I, it's, it still goes. You know, it says it in there in the constitution, and I think it's a, like the essence of this country is this: find your happiness. Um, I think we in Europe we. It gets a little too. Sometimes it gets st stuck into the academic, you know, I, I, the academic part of it. Uh, but it was a great experience, though, and it was a difficult experience. And it was, I think, you also helped me a lot by, you know, to go to the states, kind of prepare me about, you know, living alone. I made my mistakes. I made already some of the mistakes that I kept doing in the states when I first came because it's not easy, you know, when I first came. When I went to Berkeley, we were like sharing a 1,000, one-bedroom, big, one-bedroom apartment, four people. Because, you know, 250 each, that's why. Oh. But oh. I didn't care. I really didn't care. I was in school all day. I wasn't, I was doing some of my homework. And then most of the time, I just played with everybody. I played music nonstop. I played everybody's recital. Everybody. Like to the point that I got burned at some point. And I remember non-musician friends that I had that would tell me, um, you got you to gotta learn how to say no. I had no plan. The only plan I had was that I, it was, it was amazing. But anything, I played anything, anything. Like they were coming from rock, Peruvian music. That's another, another thing about this that was amazing is that I got exposed to so much music that I, I was unaware of completely. And I learned so much about the instrument from this perspective. Because, in, you know, the mechanics are amazing, but if you're going to be playing bass, if you're going to be comping in a, in a... You need to know pockets, different uh, approaches. You need to know rhythm and how it's uh, conceived by different cultures, you know. And the best... And it's an instrument that's played live. Like, you have to play live, so, you know. Yeah, and you're also very capable on the vocal aspect. Like, it's not just that, that you play, but you can also uh, sing stuff. And did that, was that always natural or did you practice it? Or like, how, how did that develop? Unfortunately, I never practiced it. And it came about, I think it has to do with where I come from, where... Uh, I couldn't stand the thought of not communicating with with somebody who listened to me when I was asked to solo. Um, it, it was just a confidence booster to vocalize what I did. And I always could, you know, I always thought of it as one instrument. Why is it like I have this and I, why, why doesn't, why does it have to be something? And why does it have to be me singing a song and comping for myself and not this being like another like another pedal, like another sound, you know. That's basically the gist around it. Uh, I should be practicing more of this independence, try to do stuff. I've always had my own little mental uh, 
um, block about composing stuff throughout my life. And I'm starting kind of late, but hey, you know, it's never too late. And I know because I've, I've been following your um, posts too, and I know like, uh, you know, mental health, like to be okay and to compose, like it's not an easy thing. It's, it's a very difficult thing. So I have my own humongous block that I'm working through right now. And through the pandemic, for the first time, I got this commission to work on to compose stuff, and I did. And it never got out really in the in the in the market. But it gave me, like, I realized that oh, okay, it's doable. You know, it's fine. You can do it. So yeah, um, it's scary to see people that I admire how good they do it, and uh, from all around the world. And how much time and effort and stress and like you know because nowadays everything's so expensive you want to do you have to do it yourself every like so many things you have to do yourself which is wow it's like you know a lot of times you're and you 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 always feel like inadequate and it's it's rough it's rough for a lot of people are like and that's the bad thing with social media that's the bad aspect of it there's good aspects of it and that's the bad ones like the stress you get out of like holy everybody's out you know doing let's go i mean what how do you do that like you know you know all of that yeah but yeah sorry i i'm always like that great that happens to me like i'm not the best person for interviews uh but the voice yeah it was mainly a, a, a confidence boost that became a thing you know yeah and um like you mentioned just in the last sentence you know uh, the the social media aspect and how it feels like everybody is making it and blah blah and yesterday i had a um talk with a good friend of mine and he was like yeah man um i've seen your post wow it, it it's great you it's but it seems like and we've been because we're discussing this topic and, and yeah it's funny because it seems like you do it in a day right but it's actually marinating for let's say 10 years or something like that and then you share it with the world but the people don't see the struggle and the uh, and the fear and uh, everything beha behind right and um it it can th then this ego comparison kicks in right and and it can really like mess up with your head big time I think they know that the people that have social media, they know that really well. So ours, uh, thank God the musician thing, like that kind of stress is okay. It's stress, but like the comparison and all that, but it's still music. You know, it's a little, a lot worse when it comes to beauty. And if you feel like you're good looking or you're not like it's get, it gets, a, imagine you feel bad because some guitar player did something that you would like to do or something, or he does something that you feel like you're inadequate, or, you know, that's bad. But just think, if you feel ugly, because you know that's how people feel today, and that's really bad. And then you you have people that would have never been any any anything in their lives, you know, knowing how to play the game of being like an influencer. You know, I'm not judging influencers; some are great stuff, but like some of it is just like glorifying things that are like what you know. It, think about it. It's new. It's very new. It is going on since 2007, if you think about it, like Facebook, whatever. So it, we're still, what is it, 23? Yeah, about to hit, you know, the 20 years, not, you know, 50 years. It's not a lot of time, mm. if you think about it. I mean, things go really fast, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. And um, how it is for you, um, because I noticed like you play a concert and like, it's, it's, it's a certain excitement after when you play a concert well, and you know, it's, it, it's this kind of a reward feeling at the end and you've been composing also. And I'm curious if you also had it, like just that I have similar feeling inside when i click that send button on the email and when i drop the pdfs in the email and send it to the conductor like that's it's it feels similar you know oh my god wrapped it up you know finally it's it's out epic feeling <laughs> right <laughs> epic i mean same goes you know i get to record for people that's that kind of happened more in the pandemic especially and you know the feeling it's like it's, it's weird it's like a 
it's just as if you did like some kind of a mild drug that like gives you you know, to, you know endorphins and whatever it's called you know like you, you feel high basically yeah yeah and and um isn't it amazing like i've just i've just contemplated this idea basically now i'm uh staying in 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 a village in slovenia and i still can have like conversations with people from all around the world you know kind of do my job through online here and there i play a concert you know and and that's a that's something else that that you can basically put yourself in a in a space that you enjoy and because of this online if you have a good internet here in this house i am privileged to have it right but you can do so many things these days like remotely i mean it's gonna it's gonna keep getting better we're like a few years um away from having all you know like that starlink all you know like we're gonna be all these cables are gonna <laughs> disappear everything's gonna be just fast and clear and immediate and uh, the, even more and that's that's what the that's what the goal is i think as long as we don't dis destroy ourselves in the in the process which is also a possibility you know yeah um i have a question for you like was there a thing or uh, in the last year or a couple of years that you have been struggling with and how are you tackling uh, tackling it could you share that maybe with us if you if there is something uh yeah i mean it's been a very difficult year uh for me like i lost my dad last year and um and my my also my my mom's really you know sick and he was taking care of her like it's a whole my whole world turned upside down and i'm here and they you know my dad was there my mom is there you know so i'm going through there um <clears throat> now in a few days next week actually i'm going to be there for 10 days so uh you know like i said as a as an outcome of this crisis that greece went through you know a lot of people have financial trouble that my family was is um falls under this category so and then you know dealing with your own stuff and after the pandemic pandemic was a big blow you know for everybody i know especially for me like it hit me where like I was traveling and playing and stuff, and then I'm like, what, what's going to happen now? What is this? And it still hasn't become being, you know, things are very expensive now. There's inflation, there's all these wars and stuff. I mean, look, uh, you take it day by day, that's very important. So you got to take some of the, uh, the at, at least the foam of this toxicity out, you know, from the, so the glass doesn't spill. I finally mustered some courage to uh start therapy and that helps a lot like i'm still in the very early stages but like talking about it about it really uh the, you know um it takes away some of the some of the confusion you know um and i have to say at the end of the day being able to play music just play like when in doubt you know, I'm going to grab the bass and I'm going to play one scale that I don't know. I'm just going to, I'm just going to practice, not even to be, to get better, not even to push myself to f do something difficult, just to, you know, play melodic minor up and down and try to tune. Um, I have to say like getting out of your comfort zone. I did it with, uh, I started playing fretless, you know, and that's always the moment you grab it. It's like play, you, you know, Let's see, are you going to be in tune? It's always like that. So um, on purpose, I have no lines. I did it as hard as possible. Like I'm expecting some basses this year. And uh, yeah, you know, that helps too. Um, but for everybody, it's different. And I, I know that there's nothing, you know, you, you can spread love and and try to... I mean, for me, I, I like communicating with people. And I think at some point I'm going to end up teaching for real, you know, because I like and I'm trying to help also that makes me feel better. You know, like you got it, let's go, you know, um, and truly get better and like truly find find your your strength and, and feel like somebody cares and 
because a lot of time that's what people need. You know, loneliness is a big problem. As much as we're connected so easily, the loneliness factor is like 10 times worse, you know? So, yeah, I mean, all of these things, music, a little bit of therapy has started now, taking it day by day. Um, you can't, you, hey, it is what it is, you know? It's a very simple uh, but very wise a little saying that they have here in the states. It is what it is. <laughs> you gotta, you know, you gotta accept it and keep on. It's not, a, you know, therapy. I realize that it's wow, it's amazing because you don't realize what's going on. Like in, in therapists, you know, study like the same way we study music. They know, they know the tricks. Like we know the trick. Like. I just had the student for the first time that's not a musician and he's like, I like this. And I'm like, you like this because two, five, one, and you like this because stepwise motion, you know, and these are like some tricks that, okay, they're really boring to know, but it's good to know because now you know what it is, you know? So it's the same thing. A therapist is like, I've seen, we, you know, we've been studying peer to peer trial and error for I don't know, 200 years. So there you go. That's what it is. Yeah. So yeah, I guess that's my, long answer <laughs> yeah thank you and i think like the the beauty of the therapy at least that's what what for me it felt like you have someone that is abs that has absolutely no connection to you like emotional whatsoever right so you can you can just talk away and and have some guidance and and not be and this just feeling of absolutely not being judged for it was for me the 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 biggest thing that I was able to explore some depths and some dark places and spaces, you know, uh, that that really started to make a difference. And then even the next step was when I went from uh, solo therapy, uh, <laughs> like a solo project. I went to a <laughs> to a group therapy, a group therapy, and that was then like because th I I didn't have it in me that I'm able to cry when people are around. I, I just thought, okay, I can try this shit, but I think it's not going to work because I have this problem. I, I cannot like, it's just, I think it's not going to work, you know, but man, like it, when, when you start hearing people and like your problems being said through other people's mouth, you know, like we're basically struggling with the same shit. And man, I just, it cracked me like every session I was closer to to opening up and and it it was just uh yeah it, it was <laughs> I remember that moment when I was just like oh guys I I have to thank everybody because it happened like I'm able to cry in front of people I'm not afraid ashamed of yeah you're afraid I'm yeah not ashamed you know like yeah 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 yeah, we're homo sapiens. We function through judgment and uh, shame and uh, guilt. And, you know, that's, I guess we just, I mean, I was just watching this series, the chimpanzees, whatever they're called, you know, they know Netflix. And we're still the same. I mean, we just, you know, we evolved as in we can do things, but we're still like groups that are going to not like the other group. And we need to be in this group. And then, because that group, they're bad for some weird, re you know, reason. So, yeah. What's the series called? What what is the? I forget the name, but it's if you put, if you type Netflix and chimpanzees, okay, um, it's gonna come out. Like it's insane. Like they are following them in the in the uh, jungle there, and they behave like a, just it's the same. It's the same. It's amazing. Yeah, I, I they're just on trees and they eat fruits, and they have different reasons for doing things. Yeah, but they're doing. They behave the same way. Like, why would you dislike the other group? No reason. Like here, or just right. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I I don't. I mean, I didn't finish it actually. I should finish it. Um, but uh, I was I'm in, amazed by by this. Amazed. You know, and you have all this still like I've, with all this information that there's online still. People need to to be like this. It's kind of crazy. 
and that's 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 all I'm gonna say without naming what it is. Doesn't matter. It could be religion. Could be nationalism. People have this insatiable necessity to belong in a group, and that's why I'm telling you at the end of the day, if you do play music and you get to do art and stuff, you're blessed. And if you do feel bad, just remember that you get to do this. It's an amazing thing, and you're able to do this. It's incredible, incredible. Um, I know that you have uh, stuff coming up, so I won't take uh, much more of your time, but I have one uh, last question. Is there a quote or, or uh, a saying or something that keeps coming back and that you keep remembering that is staying with you, uh, that is giving you some sort of boost when... When you're down, or um, to to yeah, to help you or to to empower you. I don't have a quote right now off the top of my head. I would have to think about it. There's so many inspiring things that I've seen around the world, and you know what I'm, you know what I'm realizing. The more the more I grow up, I can tell you this is that we forget a lot of times to live now. It's the hardest thing, right? And You can, you have to rem, remember remind yourself that it is the journey after all. It's not. That's what I lean on, you know. Because and it's kind of an answer to all this uh, social media thing we were talking about before. Um, you know, I still get excited to be on the plane going somewhere. Like I still have this, you know, when I first did the first trips and stuff i'm like okay we're going there yay you know <laughs> even if it's like germany would that be there like 50 times or whatever europe you know anywhere it's still like yay yeah <laughs> so yeah fi find find the beauty of them of them it's impossible now of course it's of course it's impossible you got a plan and you got to think You know, they say not dwell in the past, but, you know, from your mistakes, you learn and stuff. So, you know, you got to find out a, a balance. But I would say, if there's a quote, something along those lines, I don't remember anybody telling me, but I've been told one way or the other, uh, you know, that, you know, the journey is, it is, it is about the journey, you know? That's all I have to say for now about this. Beautiful. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> And um, would you, uh, do you think you want to add something to this whole session uh, that we had or did we miss something that, that, that you would like to talk about or um, something? No, I want to say to, I don't know, whoever's going to listen to this interview, I'm assuming musicians and to myself that it's okay. <laughs> don't worry, it's okay. I just want to say that it's okay. Yeah. It is okay. It's fine. Take it easy, relax. And you know what? Fuck it. Whatever. If you can't be a champ, it's okay. Don't be a champ. You're going to be a champ only when you really, really, you know, find it, love what's inside and find it here and just forget about everything else and just be you. You know what I mean? And be you. It's not a, it's not a bad thing being you, actually. It's not a bad thing. You know, that's a classic quote also. Only you can be you. And it's true. And yeah. be you. Fuck it. You know, it's always going to be people that, are not, that, that don't like what you do. Always. Because we're chimps. <laughs> 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 And we don't, like, we don't like other chimps. You know? On, on a side note, on a side note, I, have a dis I had a discussion. I have plenty of uh, cool friends. And one, I had a discussion with uh, a dear friend of mine, because um, we discuss also chimpanzees and monkeys and stuff. And there's this monkey called, uh, is it Bonobo or something like that? Yeah, something like that, yeah. And they have a different hierarchy than the chimpanzees. So okay. there it's like the, the matriarchate, you know, like the, 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 oh. the women are, are uh, the, the head. And uh, apparently they work like, uh, the, it's so funny because the documentary from them on YouTube is like uh, sex and fruit. So basically they have a shit ton of sex and when they have like clan problems, you know, 
the chicks from, I mean, the, the, the ladies from the bonobos, they go and they sort it out diplomatically. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And it's so funny. And they love fruit. So. <laughs> and then yeah. I think the society is kind of going in that way, you know, like you see much more, even the Slovenia got now a female president, you know, for the, for the, for the first time. This is the first time. I hope I'm not. I was away for 10 years, so I don't know, you know. <laughs> yeah, this, I mean, this is, we're in different timetables though around the world. So, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing for you to ex experience that while at the same time, this like, like, uh, violence against women, you know. So, you know, like it's, yeah, we're still not in the same it's and it's complicated. I I am a political junkie. I do spend time, unnecessary time, into you know trying to know what's what's happening. And yeah, it's still still rough out there. <clears throat> like we've been lucky though in the in the West. Um, you know we're living that time right now. Let's see where it's gonna go. Yeah, and uh, okay. On the very last note, where. Are you most active? Where can people find out more about you and uh, your upcoming shows, etc.? Look, I, I would say that after all is said and done, Instagram is the one place that I just post everything because ugh, I cannot do everything. I'm tired, you know. Um, uh, yeah, I post there a thing about, you know, I travel. I travel a lot, so... <clears throat> I'm going to be traveling again a lot. So yeah, for, for travels and stuff for people that are around the world there and for locals here in New York, I always, I always post most, you know, especially when it's, if it's work, work, not necessarily, you know, but creative stuff I do. And, you know, now it's kind of a mix of, bo of both. This past year has been more work than, than creativity, I have to say, but hey, happens. So yeah, Instagram, I would say. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, dear Panagiotis, from the depths of my heart for this interview, sharing your stories, insights, and personal personal stories. Uh, it was wonderful to uh, listen to you, and I'm sure that the people will appreciate it as well. That's beautiful that you're doing this. Thank you, thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm glad you're doing good, and I, I love the idea of your village there in Slovenia. Hopefully I'm going to come and visit. <laughs> yeah, you should, you should. We're going to arrange it. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, man. Have a good one and um, we'll talk soon. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, feel free to share your thoughts and ideas on the topics we've discussed today in the comments, as well as any burning questions you might have for my future guests. I'm your host, Mikhail Hustil, and until next time, I wish you a sound mind. <laughs>